Hey gang, it is Roby here with Divi Engine, and it's been a while, I know, but I am back with some fun stuff for us to look at today. Today's Divi tutorial is gonna be about Divi membership and how to go about building out a Divi membership site. And we're gonna be using, of course, a Divi membership plugin. So if you don't have it yet, check out the link in the description and buy it. It's a great plugin and it's one of our newest ones. Now, what we are gonna be looking at is not the step-by-step -step guide of building it, but rather where are you gonna go to do different things? Now, if you follow our blog, you would have seen that we recently did a quick blog post on how to plan your membership site, a comprehensive guide. So we're gonna look at where you're gonna go ahead and do all these things within the Divi membership plugin. But of course you can apply this strategy or whatever you wanna call it to any membership site that you're building. Got some good stuff in there. The link will be in the description for this. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at how that's done right now. Okay, guys, so here we are. This is a site that I previously had built in Divi and Divi membership. And what this is, is a subscription wine box site that I have done. You know them, uh, how you get some wine every month from these guys. I will link this demo in the description also if you want to check it out. But it's got some cool stuff in there. And of course, we're using Stripe and PayPal as our payment gateways. So why don't we jump into the back end of this site? Okay, let's follow along. Now there's a few different components you wanna look at when you're building out a membership site, right? So if I look here, the first thing is we need to define our subscription plans. So you might be building something like a e-learning portal, or maybe you've got yoga classes online or whatever the case might be, and you want people to sign up for that, you're gonna to need to have some plans, right? Or some options. So once you've installed Divi membership, all you gotta do is you're gonna be going to Divi membership and you're gonna click on membership. Simple enough, right? And in here, you've got a few different plans that I've already built out. So I have a free one. This one's not actually live yet, but it is out there And because you can absolutely do free plans. And then I've got a basic and a premium one because I wanna have some different tiers. So if you have a basic tier and a premium tier, or maybe an enterprise tier, you would define these right here. So let's take a look at what one of these looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit my basic box here. So you've decided you want these different tiers. Now, the next step is you're gonna need to figure out what type of billing cycle and stuff like that you're gonna want in there. Yeah, of course, you put the description of this specific membership tier. And then I here had set up bi-monthly and annual billing. You can set this as a one-time payment. So maybe you're just selling access to a single course, for example, you would set this to one time. And of course, when you set it to one time, the frequency and duration goes away. So that gives you that information. But let's say you do want it to be recurring. You can set the frequency to, let's say, a year or the duration would be for one year. Now that gives you the pricing options and how people will pay for it or how frequently people will pay for it. That's the better way to put this. Now, the other thing that you do here is for each billing cycle, you could set specific pricing. Uh, you don't need to have a bi-monthly or annual or, you know, if I just wanted to have once off, I can just click the plus button right there. I can go ahead and say one time and this, I would just go ahead and say one time and then put the pricing in there for whatever I want it to be. You can put a small description in there and then also just display format. That would be like if you have your pricing table out there, whether it's going to say per year, whatever the case might be. So you can set all that fun stuff up. Okay. So now we know where we set up our billing. There are other things in here where you're going to want to list the different features that come with each different access plan. So let's say in the setting of an e-learning site, you might have some basic courses that the basic tier gets access to. Maybe you've got a free tier and then you just want to outline those here as to what the features are. And let me show you on the front end what that means. So when I go to become a member here on my demo site, which again is linked in the description of the video, you, okay, well, I'm already a member, so I need to open up an incognito window, which I'll do right now. And I'll just go there really quick. There we go. Now I can sign up here and here are the different options. But when I go to the wine club page, it's, gonna give me all the different things down here. But now here we have our basic box. Now, when you compare these features that you see here, you'll see that they're mirrored here, nine bottles of our regular wines. So if I come back to this one, nine bottles of our regular wines, you see what I mean? 
And from here, you can do the bi-monthly or annual. So this will be where you kind of go set the different payment options and you see how it kind of updates everything there for you, which is quite nifty. So that I digress, but I wanted to show that to you real quick. So these are the features then that you put in there. Got to expand those again. There we go. Okay. Now, great that you have a billing cycle in there and your different billing plans and stuff like that, but you're also going to need to be able to set up the payment gateways. Other payment gateways, of course, supported in the V membership is any Stripe payment or PayPal. So you're going to need a PayPal or Stripe account to use the V membership and accept those payments, but that's easy to set up. So if I go to Divi and I go to Divi membership settings. So now in the Divi membership settings, you can set all sorts of different settings for importing demo content. If you're just getting started, you want to get a feeling for how this works. But what we're interested in is the payment gateways. Now I have enabled Stripe and I'm using my demo Stripe account here. And you can validate your API keys. If you enable PayPal, you'll see the PayPal options come up. It's very dynamic, but this, you know, you will need to go through the documentation to figure out how to do this. Or you can just go ahead and work with the Stripe support because they will have the secret API keys and the publishable keys for you. Now, you can also set the different messages that get sent or displayed for the user when there is an error with their payment method or whatever they have is maybe input incorrectly, that type of stuff. So it's good to give the user feedback. So for payment gateways, that's pretty much how it goes. And we're probably going to have to give them a way to log in and register, right? So that's that one screen that I kind of hop into on the incognito window we just saw. So yeah, we're going to have to give people a place to log in. Now you can see here, if I come to general, it allows you actually to go ahead and yeah, you can see login page. And there you go. Yeah, with login, I can select that page. It's of course a page that I've built and I've got it right here. So looking at the page, and I will quickly go into the module view for you. Just get in here and then module view. You can see here, all the other stuff is pretty much fluff, but the login form for Divi membership, that is the unique module that you're going to use to do that. And when, when I click on that right here, and this is a conditional display text field, basically, that will just display this if the user is already logged in. So we're not double posting or showing things on the screen. And here you go, form title, all the stuff that you'd imagine. Now you can select redirect pages and all that fun stuff. I'm not going to get into this right now. We'll do this in the future, but this is the login module and you've got all sorts of layout options, one column, two column, field labels. You can do the design stuff and then the conditional logic stuff all lives over here. And that is logging in. Now, registering, as you can imagine, is pretty much the same thing. Actually, discard an exit, go up here, and I just want to show you the register screen. I go to my pages, I've got my join, and I'll edit that, and here we'll have the same deal. Tons of fluff that makes it all look nice and pretty, as you can see, but the core module here for registration is the registration form. So going in here, you can select what user role they get when they are subscribing, you can do all the other things that you can in the other one, which is basically redirecting it. If you're a logged in user, what do you want it to do? Show a layout, and then you've got a layout that you can build in the Divi Boulder in the library that's saved in the library and have that displayed over there for users that are logged in already. And yeah, basically same settings. You can change the field styles, all that fun stuff, as you can see here. And, you know, we get a little fancy with different payment options and whatnot. That all depends on how it's set up in the payment section. We looked at it a little bit earlier. So registration done. So it's as easy, easy as that. You've got a login module, you've got a registration module, and then that's the way that people get signed up. And then of course, you know, based on the plan selection and stuff like that, it will display a little bit differently, but that's easy enough. Cool. So as you can see, here's the select plan. But if you select it from the page I showed you earlier, where it had the join on the incognito window, it will pre-fold and pre-select that plan for you. So that makes it nice and easy. That is pretty good. So now we've got this set up and we've got our different tiers here that we had set up earlier. Now, what is all of this if you can't restrict content based on the tier they're in, right? Let me quickly hop back to the memberships here. And I'm going to go back into my premium box just for testing. And then, yeah, by content access. Now, here you can select the type of content people have access to. Now, if you've got a membership site, for example, membership site, of course, you've got a membership site. But if it's an educational site where you're selling courses or classes to something and whatnot, here is where you define either the category. So I have basic and premium categories for my posts here. So people would have access to it based on that. And then also 
course, you could put all pages. So maybe you've got a special download for you know your members or whatever. You can put that on a page, then you can pull that page in here and it's as easy as that. Now we do have some other more advanced ways. Of course, you can see here the different taxonomy. So you can change the different post types. So if you're using something like Divi Machine with this, you can select those post types in here to have only access for those users that pay for this membership tier. So yeah, there we go. There is that way. Now I'm gonna show you another way that we can restrict access here in a second. And let me just go back to my Divi membership settings here. And here we've got content restriction. And now there are a bunch of different options as far as what is displayed when people don't have access because you want to redact some of that stuff, of course, because otherwise, what's the point? Why register if you're getting it for free, right? So, you know, so if in the context of a course or something like that, maybe you want a little bit of teaser text, maybe you want to give them access to one or two chapters, that type of stuff, that's all done here. Now, uh, you know, I can get into this right now, but I'm going to do a whole different video series on how to build an entire site from scratch. No sense in getting to it here, but if you already purchased the plugin and you wanted to know, where do I go do this simple thing? This is where you do it. So one more way to restrict different content is to also just go to, let's say a post. And I've got this demo content here. And you can see this is a basic category post. And there's really nothing on here for you, but you know, remember what I said, the different categories you're going to want to specify here is that. Now, the big thing comes in when we're looking and using Divi modules, because you'll see that we've actually in our loop layouts here that we're utilizing. Let me just go to the Divi library. And here we've got our non-member layouts and all that fun stuff. But yeah, we've got a basic feature loop layout. Now, let me show you in the Divi library, but let's rather go to the theme builder because it's going to be anywhere basically that you will have any type of Divi modules in there. So I'm just for argument's sake, opening up this member list layout the member directory and the, this is something you can use for your engagement and there's also a special module for that which I'll show you but let me just open up this module this is the user list module but when we go to advanced here and we go to conditions you can see here that you can add all sorts of custom content and restrict the content and different types of things outside of the basic Divi visibility conditional layout the rules. And because usually what that is, is if the user's logged in, show it, if the user's not logged in. But here we can say all different stuff, like we want to use the global setting. Now that's the one we just looked at in the global settings in the Divi engine, the Divi membership settings. But you can also select on a very granular level uh, override for that setting. So that makes life a little bit easier. And here's just a bunch of text that I put in here for showing the custom content. And then also here are some options. You can show it, you can hide it, or you can hide it with custom text. And this is of course the custom text area. And if I go into a visual layout here, actually, there you go. It kind of blurs it out in the background and that's why it is like that, you can get people, encourage them to sign up and all that fun stuff. So a lot of different ways you can restrict content, but also tease people and get them to sign up for your service or a specific package or whatever the case might be. And of course, when you have users that are signed up, you are going to want to give them an area they can go to look at it. Now, we're already looking at the member directory page, and I'll show you what that looks like on the front end. So just if I come up here and I go to my account, I'm going to be able to see the my account area. And here I've got my dashboard. I can go review my membership. I can cancel it right here. So I've got my invoices and yeah, so I can just do basic account related stuff. If I come back here and let me exit this layout, I'm going to discard and exit. And when I come back to my pages here, I want to show you also the member directory. Since I am a member, I can see everything. And here's a member di directory where you can see all the people that are registered. So that's what that module does. So good way to engage people. And, you know, you can add different types of custom fields in here and stuff. Show people what's going on. So yeah, there you have it. This is kind of like how you work with the engagement part. Now, the last thing I want to show you guys in here, if I come back to my dashboard and I go here to Divi membership settings, here, you can also control the basic design so you can, you know, en enable custom appearance for the content message window, kind of like that thing I just showed you on the granular level, but email notifications. So you have a bunch of different email notifications that go out to both the admin of the site and of course the user, right? So customer welcome email, upcoming renewal notification, your membership expired notifications and all that fun stuff. You can use different variables and you can actually just 
pull that um, from the sign up form or from the documentation where it will actually give you all this information on the different variables you can use. So in general, this is how Divi membership works. Now we do have also have, of course, Zapier integration. So you you can add all sorts of automation so it can link in with your CRM system, all sorts of different stuff so that you can go ahead and do a little bit of extra stuff with your subscriptions and so forth. Of course, there's spam protection. I can go through all these different things all day long. You can add custom endpoints to show in the My Account area. And then of course, all your business settings are right here. So definitely a great way to engage people and make money from the content that you really have. And then if we just scroll down, I just want to make sure I'm hitting everything. Of course, there's also the monitoring and analytics. That part I forgot. Let's take a look at that really quickly. All you got to do is come here to Divi membership. You can look at all your members, by the way, if you just click on members and here we go and I can view the subscription, I can delete them, but we've also got the reporting so you can see how much money that you're making. Now, this is not the most advanced reporting system in the world, but it is something that gives you an idea of the business. So we definitely want to hear from you guys what type of reporting we can put in here and the date ranges and all that fun stuff. And then also just all the subscriptions that you have will all be listed right here, whether they're expired, active, or whatever the case might be. So guys, this has been kind of just a walkthrough of where you go to do different things in Divi membership. Hopefully you enjoyed it. You don't have Divi membership yet go and get it and definitely keep an eye out because I'm going to get into a lot more detail of the different aspects of like restricting content and stuff like that in future videos. And of course, that course, that course, uh, more like a series of how to build a Divi membership site from scratch. And maybe we'll do an online class version of that where you can sell courses and stuff. So that's it for me, Roby with the Divi Engine team. Like, subscribe, follow, smash the buttons, do all the things. I'm going to catch you in the next video real soon. Bye for now.